Hey, welcome to my channel guys. In today's video, we will learn about convertible debentures and in this we are going to learn about the meaning, the terms associated with convertible debentures. Along with this, we are going to learn about the valuation of convertible debentures with the help of the illustration and at last, we will learn about advantages and disadvantages of convertible debentures. Now, without wasting any single second, let's begin. First of all, what is the convertible debentures? I hope you understand the meaning of debentures. What are debentures basically? These are the long-term debt instruments issued by companies to the general public, right? So, if any company issues debenture, that is a long-term loan only, it has to pay what? The interest has to be paid as well as the principal amount has to be paid after the stipulated period of time, right? So, convertible debentures are the debentures that after say a specified number of years, they can be converted into ordinary shares, ordinary shares say equities, right? So, after certain period of time, these can be converted into ordinary shares at the option of the owners. That means, Owners have the option whether they want to convert it into equity or not. Since this has convertible debentures has a feature of both debt, debt in terms, till you hold the deb uh, convertible debentures, it will give you what? The interest will be paid and once you convert it into equity, the capital appreciation will be there. That is why debt plus equity feature is there in the convertible debenture. Since both these features are available, this type of security is known as the hybrid security. I hope this is clear to you guys. I've already explained to you that it promises fixed income associated with debentures till you hold the debentures. And once you convert it into equity, the capital gain is will be there. Right? Okay. Then there is an option given to the Owners. Owners have that option and there is no obligation to convert it into the equity. The issuer decides the conversion ratio. We will understand what is the conversion ratio. Over here just understand one thing. Supposedly if you hold one debenture. For one debenture how many shares you will be issued. Say if you have one debenture and the company issues you 20 equity shares. So what will be the conversion ratio? 1 is to 20. Right, we'll understand this in detail as well. Then we have is the if the share price is high, the market price is high, then only the person will convert it into equity shares, otherwise, not. Again, this concept will be explained to you with the help of the example. Right now, we have two types of convertible debentures one is partially convertible debentures, and another one is fully convertible, as the name suggests. Partially convertible. That means the debentures you hold. Among those, only few of them can be converted. Say if you hold 1000 debentures, among those, say 500 can be converted into equity. This is partially convertible debentures. Whereas fully convertible debentures, if you have 1000 debentures, all the debentures can be converted into equity. This is fully convertible debentures. I hope... I have cleared you till here. Right. Let's move further. Further we have is the conversion ratio. As I have already explained you what is the conversion ratio. It is how many equity shares have been issued to the investors against the number of convertible debentures. Okay. Then the conversion price. The price at which the debenture holders were given the equity shares. This is your conversion price. Then is your convertible value, the total, the total worth of the debentures that were converted into share is known as the convertible value. So how can you compute the convertible value? Market value of the shares. Okay, market value of the shares into conversion ratio. This was a conversion ratio. Okay, I'll take the illustration of this. You'll understand it, it better. Then we have is a market price. 
Now, what is the market price? The current market price that is prevailing on the stock exchange. Okay, whatever is the price that is prevailing on the stock exchange of a particular share is known as the market price or say current price. And last is the quantum of conversion. That is how many the number of debentures an investor can convert is known as the quantum of conversion. Clear? Okay. Then the formula is given to you for the conversion ratio that is par value of debentures, convertible debentures divided by the conversion price. Okay. Let's go to the example and understand. Over here, ABC Limited issues 8,15% convertible debentures. Over here, what is the interest rate? 15% is the interest rate. It is saying 8,15% convertible debentures of 125 each. So, whenever the company is issuing the convertible debentures, what is the inflow? 8 lakh into 125. The value comes out to be 1000 lakh. This is the initial inflow of the company. Alright. Another thing that you need to note over here is that 15% is being paid. 15% is being paid to the debenture holders. So, how much is being paid? 150 lakh is being paid as the interest to the debenture holders. Okay. Then it is saying that that are convertible into two equity shares of 62.5 each two years after two years from the date of allotment but within three months of such a period. So over here if I want to compute my conversion ratio how will I compute the conversion ratio what was the formula we have studied par value of convertible debentures divided by market price of shares what was the par value over here 1000 lakh divided by 62.5 this comes out to be approximately 16 lakh is your conversion ratio i hope i have cleared you what is conversion ratio if you have any doubt you can comment in the comment section i will surely reply to you guys Okay, now we move to the valuation of convertible debentures. This is very important. Okay, so the valuation of convertible debentures uh, depends upon number of things like market price of the ordinary shares, whatever is it is prevailing, the price that is prevailing in the stock market, the current price. Okay, then is the conversion value. Conversion value, uh, this is you know how to compute, we have already computed. Then it is also given the value of non-convertible or straight debentures which are also known as the investment value. So what are non-convertible or straight debentures? These are the debentures without the clause of conversion. Without the clause of conversion. So over here what do we do? We compute the present value of such non-convertible debentures right what is the present value this means if i invest thousand rupees today after say 10 years what will be the value of thousand rupees because what if i uh what is the time value of money money earned today is better than money earned tomorrow okay so the value will decrease after 10 years to compute such value we determine the present value of such debentures right okay there are certain terms that you need to understand first is the conversion value what is the conversion value simply conversion value is the overall value of the debentures that once you converted into the equity shares so what will be the formula conversion ratio how do we compute we've seen par value of debentures okay divided by market price of shares this is how you compute the conversion ratio into share price that is the current market price of the shares 
Okay, next is the value of convert non convertible debentures or the straight debentures. Over here, what do we do? We take into consideration both the interest as well as the principal amount, right? We take into consideration interest as well as the principal amount, and then we try to compute the present value of future interest payment and principal at the time of redemption at the required rate of return. I will explain you this with the help of the example, right? And last is the market value of the convertible debentures. Okay, now we have an example of XYZ Limited has an outstanding issue of convertible debentures with rupees 1000 par value. It has 1000 par value. They are convertible into 100 ordinary shares. They have 10% annual coupon rate. What is annual coupon rate? Interest rate simply. Right? And 10 years of maturity. Another thing that is given to you guys is the interest rate on straight bonds. Straight bond does the non-convertible, right? Bonds is 12%. Now over here, we have to compute the straight debenture, the value of the straight debentures. Now if I say, the question says that for the 10 years, I'll be getting 10% of interest on rupees 1000. This comes out to be? 100 okay. every year for the next 10 years i'll be getting 100 as the interest rate agreed but at the end of the 10th year i'll be getting rupees 100 as well as rupees 1000 that is my principal amount i will get back okay interest as well as the principal amount now if i have to compute now if i have to compute the value of the straight debentures what two things do I have? First is the interest rate. Okay, that is rupees 100 for the next 10 years. Isn't it? For the next 10 years, we have rupees 100 as the interest. And at the end of 10th year, 1000, that is my principal value. I have to compute the present value. How do we compute the present value? We see the tables. Over here, I have taken the table. First is the present value of annuity of 1 rupee. So, over here, for the next 10 years, I will be getting 100 each. 100, 100, 100 for the next year. That is why I go to the annuity table. Right? Here, we have the number of years and here is the discount rate that has been given to us. Now, in the question, we can see that for the, uh, say, for the straight bonds, what is the interest rate? It is 12%. Right? So, we go into the table. From the years for 10th year. In the 10th year, we have to see the 12%. Okay? Over here, what is the value in the 10th year? This is 5.650. Isn't it? Okay, then if we multiply this. What value do we get? 5. 65 if we multiply 100 with the present value we get the value a uh, present value factor we get the present value actually right then if i have to compute for thousand for the in the 10th year it is not every year but at the last year that is the 10th year i'll be getting thousand rupees so let's go to another table that is the present value of one rupee present value that means what is the value of 1000 rupees after 10 years so in the 12 percent we can see for the 10th year 0. Point, it will be 0. 0.322 so if we multiply this and get the present value what is the value 322 and if we add both of these what do i get 877 so, this is the value of your debenture. That is your non-convertible debenture. This is your value. I hope this is clear to you guys. I hope there is no doubt. If yes, then please comment in the comment section. I will reply to you guys. Okay. First thing is done. Right. Next is the conversion of the share uh, of the debentures when the market price is given rupees 8 10 14 and 20 so if the market price of the share is given to you say 8 
10, 14 and 20. Okay. So, what do we do? We have the conversion ratio for one convertible debentures. 100 equity shares will be issued to you. This is your conversion ratio. Okay. So, your conversion value will be what was the formula for conversion value? It was conversion ratio into market price of the share. Right. So, simply if you multiply market price with the conversion ratio, this comes out to be 800, then 1000, and then 1400 and 2000. Clear? Now we saw that, previously we saw that for the straight debentures, what was the value? It came out to be rupees 877 that we computed. Okay. If I can get the debenture for rupees 877 and the market price is 800, why would I convert it into equity share? I being a debenture holder, I would not like to convert it into the equity share. However, if the market price is more than the present value, that is it is more than 877. So, 1000 is more than that, 1400 is more than this and 2000 and more than this. That means market price is more than the present value. I will definitely go and invest. Okay, the market price has to be more than your, the present value. Then only you will exercise this option. And further, we have the diagram over here that explains you. Over here, we have taken the conversion price. Okay, this is your conversion price. And here is the market price of the share. It is independent factor. That is why we have taken it on the horizontal line, the market price. This is your investment value. What is the investment value? The non-convertible dimensions, isn't it? Non-convertible dimensions was there. This is your market price and this is your conversion price. So, you can see as the price of the share is going up, the conversion value is also increasing. This is your conversion value. This is also increasing. And here is your market value of the debenture. Market value of the debenture has to be more than your conversion value. Then only you will be interested to convert it. Right? If say in market you are getting it in the lesser price than the conversion value. Why will you convert it? You would rather go to the market and purchase it yourself. Okay, the market value is always more than your conversion value and this is your premium. This is your premium, okay? Okay, now at the last we have the advantages of using convertible debentures. There are a number of advantages. First is the sweetening of debentures to make them attractive. How? Because it has features of both debt and equity. So, if somebody wants consistent income initially, he would invest over here to, And then if they want capital appreciation, they can convert it into equity. Next is it tax efficient. As you guys know that your debt is always tax efficient. Okay. So, so if the company is new and it want, and it is earning lesser profits, it can book their interest in their PNL profit and loss account and they can avail the tax benefits. Further we have is avoiding immediate dilution of earning. Since you know if the sh um, since you know that shareholders are the what? Say owners of the company. So this will lead to the dilution of the company. It we are what what we are doing we are deferring it. We are deferring the dilution of the company. Then selling ordinary shares in the future at higher prices. So if the company wants, it can further in the upcoming years, it can sell their shares at a higher prices. Low cost of capital initially. You know that there are two costs that are majorly involved for the company. One is your uh, debt. Another one is in terms of your shares. So for debt, it is interest. And for shares, it is dividend, right? So, since you know that interest is always lesser than whatever the company declares the dividend. So, there is low cost initially if you want to issue the convertible debentures. 
At last, we have the disadvantages of using the convertible debentures. First is a lower priority. That means these convertible debentures are usually unsecured. They do not back any asset. So, in terms when there is bankruptcy or liquidity, they stand lesser than the secured debentures or the secured loans, right? They are riskier because they do not usually have the asset backed and dilution of the equity. Once the debenture holders convert the convertible debentures into equity, the shares will increase. Shares will increase and shareholders will increase. Once the shareholders will increase, what will happen if the company declares dividend? Lesser dividend will be given to each of the shareholders because now the number of shareholders have increased. So this might also affect the performance of the company. Okay, so that is it for today guys. I hope you've learned something. If yes, then please subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.